I set up five cameras all around my kitchen to see if I can make a steak dinner with two side dishes for three people in less than 31 minutes. And you may be asking, interesting, but why five cameras? Well, there are an infinite amount of recipe videos online, and each of them are cut to show the best shots in a clean and condensed format. I myself have contributed over 350 of them. But those videos struggle to properly demonstrate what it's actually like to be a home cook. So many questions arise when you start cooking that are completely unrelated to the actual food being made. And I'm talking about questions like, when do I grab out the ingredients from the fridge? What dish should I start first? Are there any tasks I can work on in parallel? How and when do I wash dishes as I cook? Do I need to hover over my steaks when they are cooking? Or what happens if one dish gets done before another? Good and bad, we left it all in this video. So if, for example, my pasta starts to boil over while I'm doing some prep, that's something you can learn from. Five different cameras, a true home cooking experience. Let's break it down. Hi right, everybody, welcome in to a beautiful experiment that may go horribly wrong. I have no idea if this video is gonna be a train wreck or something very, very interesting for you. As you guys learned in the intro, we've got cameras set up all over the kitchen and then we're gonna to try to make a steak dinner in 30 minutes. So let's start the timer right now. So to start, we're, our menu is basically steaks, orzo salad, and some uh, roasted broccoli. So I wanted to kind of do three different items so you can see me kind of move around the kitchen rather than just like a one pot meal. Um, and as I'm going through this, what I'm thinking about is what's my most critical component that I need to start first, which as I was in the fridge, I realized is actually the pasta. Because with the orzo salad, I need to get the pasta done and cook it and then I'll also drain it. And it doesn't need to be cooled, but I don't want it ripping hot, ideally. So maybe on the next edition, we'll get a, uh... maybe on the next edition, we can get a pantry cam. So I'm gonna get that started over high heat, big pinch of salt. And then, as we've kind of learned, I don't bother waiting for my pasta to boil. It's, uh, as long as you stir it a couple times and don't let it sit there, um, it's not gonna stick, it's not really an issue. And I don't know how much orzo that was, but probably three quarters of the pound. And away we go. Okay, so while that's cooking, I'm probably gonna grab almost everything I need out of the fridge and ideally not really return here at all. Um, so getting the components, got the steaks out, got my different cheeses. We're gonna do a nice little chimichurri that's gonna act as both the dressing for the orzo salad um, and then can be used as a topping on the steak as well. And then speaking of these steaks, I've got two, these are like massive New York strips. I think in total, this was like two pounds. So what I'm gonna do for these, I'm just gonna salt them. Um, I like to kind of add pepper afterwards to so you get that kind of strong bite of pepper, though you can definitely add it before if you want to. And then just got my meat hand here, so. Sprinkle from up high and just kind of pat it down just to make sure we're getting full coverage on both sides of these. Mm -hmm. 
And then kind of as we're going through this video, we'll try to make it hopefully as interesting as, to look at as possible. Um, like when things are coming done back on the stove, when things are coming to a boil and all that. So you can really see like when I'm going to the sink, when I'm going to the fridge, when I'm putting items away. Um, all that are very important things that, you know, home cooks do on a day-to-day -day basis, but we rarely are actually seeing them in like the videos I'm making or the videos you see on TV or most YouTube videos. So hopefully this is an interesting concept. Um, and I got the idea from that Bon Appetit video where they did it in like a busy brunch restaurant, I think. But I thought it would be very applicable for us um, to do it in a home cook. So you can see how I'm moving around the kitchen. Um, not to say that I cook the right way, but just saying to give you something to relate to. Like when am I, yeah, when am I cleaning stuff? How am I working on tasks? in tandem, like we have the pasta going, we've salted the steaks and kind of how everything comes together rather than just kind of a piecemeal, like five minute section of me giving you the entire recipe. So steaks done, they're just gonna chill over here for now. Um, we'll cook them way towards the end, but just like to get, a, get them salted and out of the way. And then what we're gonna do is make the chimichurri next. Um, and this looks like a, sometimes like cilantro or par, or, you know, cilantro, this is parsley, but sometimes parsley may have like a little bit of, I don't know, like sand or like, you know, just like from when it was picked. I think this is like a little gritty, so I'm just going to wash that off. Um, so we got our parsley. We're gonna throw in some of these like chopped Calabrian peppers just for a little spice. Um, you could do red pepper flakes, anything like that. Um, actually, I'm not gonna use the lemon now. Um, need some garlic cloves. And this is one area we don't have. Again, like back there, I kind of have most of my pantry, like pantry, uh, pantry vegetables. So like garlic, onions are typically back there. Um, we, maybe we can get a camera for that spot too eventually. And then let's get some vinegar and olive oil for this. And let me get my knives. So pars parsley chopped up um, and really chimichurri in general. I'm not, I don't, this is like a loosely, I guess, traditional one, but really for me, when I think of chimichurri, I'm just thinking a lot of herbs in oil with a little bit of um, other aromatics. So I'm gonna use garlic in this case and then the peppers um, and then some acidity as well. So you could use lemon juice. I'm gonna use a little bit of this like tarragon vinegar. Um, that I found at the store, it was kind of interesting. So we'll see, we'll see if that works. Maybe it won't, maybe it will. But distilled white vinegar, really anything acidic could be used for this, just to give it a nice little brightness um, and to mix with the fats and the herbs and garlic and all that.
And I think most of the time when I cook at home, I generally, you know, if I'm just cooking for myself, it's generally like a one pot meal or something I make and throw inside of a sandwich, a taco, something like that. But like when cooking for other people, I feel like a lot of times you want to kind of do multiple dishes just because it's a little bit more fun uh, to, to actually eat and serve somebody rather than just like, you know, one, a one pot meal. So that was kind of the thought for, for this guy. So I've got garlic in there and then these are already chopped up actually. So, eh, they're kind of big chunks though. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mince this a little bit. I'm trying to gauge how spicy these are. They're not like crazy, but a good amount of spice for sure. handy to just have a towel around dry up hands get little bits of ingredients off and then olive oil I'm using for this one which just recently released a video about olive oil and kind of going through the use cases um, talking about like do the fancy ones you know actually taste better or different and all olive oils do like taste slightly different you'll definitely notice it most in raw applications um, so this is a great one to use for that. Maybe if you do want, if you bought some nicer olive oil and it has like a specific flavor profile that you like, go ahead and use it in raw applications. Um, with cooking certain things, it might be a little tough. Even in like pastas or things like that, like garnishes are gonna make the bigger difference than just using it. Um, in, uh, in cooking applications. And I think the biggest thing that was most interesting for me in that video was with like the lower kind of everyday cooking extra virgin olive oil, the fried chicken cutlet was actually not terribly different from the peanut oil that I'd normally use to fry with, which has kind of given me some new ideas for videos and maybe looking back at some of those um, concepts that I've thought about in the past. But that's done. So we're going to use this for the... Ooh, we're boiling up here. Um, so that can happen from time to time, right? But like I said, it's not a big deal for orzo salad. I, like it doesn't need to be perfectly cooked or whatever. Um, and then I'm just gonna pop back my, I'm gonna have a little baby splash. Pop back my pantry items. get some of these fridge items back out of the way. And then we'll get on to chopping up all of the vegetables. Oh, you know what I gotta do? Set my oven on broiler. Another critical component, if you forget about your oven, um, is to do, but with this set on broil, it's, you know, you don't need to wait for like the entire thing to preheat to 450. It's really just that top heating element. Um, and using the broiler, I feel like is a very underutilized setting on the oven. That is a, uh, a great one to use. Okay, so we got the chimichurri done, which again, it's gonna be used for multiple things, serve at the table and for the orzo salad as the dressing. Um, actually, I'm just gonna do one batch, I think, of this baby broccoli. Actually, I'll do two, why not? Just kind of cutting, cutting the base off of this. Like the base can be a little bit uh, woody and not as pleasant to bite into. Um, just depends a little bit on each one, I mean, 
if, as long as you can snap it like that, that's you, normally a pretty good case. If you're kind of having trouble, or if you just kind of bite the end of it, and you realize it's kind of hard to bite into, probably get rid of it, and just cut off that base. And then for this broccoli, I'm going ridiculously simple. All we're gonna do is a big pinch of salt and oil, and then I'm gonna season it at the end with some black pepper and a spritz of lemon. Um, and my idea behind that is to really get those, the lemon to kind of shine at the end and also the black pepper. Rather than adding it, you know, if you add it before the cooking process, it'll mellow out both of those flavors. Um, and I can already tell I'm going to need to fill up my salt thing again. But just making sure these are nice and coated with oil. They've got salt touching them. And then these are just going to roast under the broiler pretty nicely. And you know what? This is probably done, if I had to guess. Probably cooked my... Uh, uh, mm, actually, it might need a little bit more. It's still a little, a little firm to the tooth. All right, boom, that's done. Um, I'll let the that heat up and get to a little bit hotter before I actually finish it. Um, And then just swiping off some of this excess vegetable and whatnot into the bowl. And then let's finish up our orzo salad components. I'm going to toss everything into this bowl, starting with the tomatoes. And again, one of the quickest ways to chop these is just two deli lids, slicing them down, bring your knife down through. You can chop them into quarters again if you want to. I'm feeling kind of lazy, so I'm not going to. Sometimes I do that if I want to really, you know, kind of control it and make it nice bite-sized pieces, but, you know, just kind of in the mood to not do that today. And we're under, we are under a little bit of a time crunch with 30 minutes. And just toss these into the dishwasher. Toss this fork in there. I'll probably use a spoon to serve it. Next up, red onion. Big red onion. Probably only going to use a quarter of this for the actual salad. Yeah, I think that'll work. So we'll just do these, these kind of slices. Actually, are these a little bit too big? Maybe I'll cut these in half. We'll kind of do quarter moons, I guess, cut into, or half moons cut into quarters. I guess it depends on how you look at it. And then I typically just store my onions, like leftover onions, just in a little container like this. Um, often I won't even put a lid on it and then I'll just toss it back in the fridge. So I'm gonna leave that over there. We'll add our onions here. Uh, oh, garbanzo beans, I forgot we're gonna toss in there as well. Let me check this. Yeah, this looks done to me, so. Oh, uh, where did I put that? That is a good question. Uh-oh. Lost the strainer. Oh, here we go. Let me double check, make sure this is done. Yep, that'll play. Oh, wow, that kind of stuck, it's all right. Again, not a big deal for this, 
and you don't need it to be super starchy. So it did stick a little bit because I was, you know, messing around and doing other things, but that's just something that happens as a home cook, not something to worry about, not something to get stressed about. So I'll let that, that soak over there and then it'll come off in about 10 minutes. Oh, garbanzo beans, back to what I was getting to. Oh, this guy fell in. What time are we at? I'm curious if you can actually see. Oh, uh, 20 something minutes? I got like 20 minutes? It's gonna be close. We'll probably go a little bit over now that I'm thinking about this. But I'm gonna get the, uh, the griddle heated up, get that ripping hot. Um, broiler's probably ready to go, so I'm gonna to toss the broccoli in. Drain the chickpeas, those are in. That in there. I'm gonna toss this right in. And I actually like when it is kind of warm still, like warm pasta salad. Sounds a little bit weird, but once you actually try it, it's kind of nice, the temperature contrast between the kind of colder ingredients and the, um, the warm pasta, it creates like a really, it reminds you of like pasta alla checa, which I've done a video on in the past. So what I'm gonna do, grab a nice big spoonful of this, plop it right down. Already smells so good. And then I'm going to crumble in some of this feta cheese, which is gonna give it a little salt, a little bit of, you know, kind of creaminess to work in there as well. And just like that, one component done. And my towel. Well, I'm actually not gonna put the lid out. I'll, I'll just kind of leave this at room temp. But if you were storing that in the fridge, you know, then you have your lid, you're good to go. Toss a couple of these things back in the fridge. And then we are ready to cook the steak. stove cam at the per the worst time. All right, so I have to pause this video because we lost stove cam right when I'm actually gonna cook on the stove. So we'll, we'll take the pause into consideration. Once I have this charge back up, we'll, we'll rerun everything. Okay, so I knew something was gonna go wrong. We took about a 15 minute pause just to charge and I've gotta go quick because it's probably gonna run out of battery. But I took the broccoli out of the oven so it didn't continue cooking. So no, uh, no cheating there, I'm gonna to toss that back in. 
And then really all that's left to do is cook the steak. And with the steak, because of that salt, it's got some moisture on top of it. So what would be ideal is you let this go overnight and it really dries out. But using a paper towel, good way to just uh, dry it off yourself. And I'm gonna put it that dry side face down. So we're running pretty hot on this. Get my tongs. And I'm gonna dry off this other side as well. Now, during this time, I'm actually gonna get all the, basically all the dishes done. Um, I can let this go and kind of be dishwashing. I don't need to be over that steak constantly. So this is a good example of being able to stack those tasks, cleaning as you go, and really not, not leaving yourself with much, if any, dishes. And I'm gonna actually use these, I'm not really gonna wash those. Couple pieces of pasta stuck on there, but we'll get them off in no time. So yeah, just like that. Oop, little, one more over here. Little pasta starch on the outside. But just like that, all the dishes that were in the sink at least are done. And then now I can get back to flipping my steak. and making sure I'm not burning the broccoli. All right, broccoli, nice and charred. I'll bring this over to the, uh, this cam so you guys can see it hopefully. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Looking pretty good. And then, Since these steaks are super thick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a while to actually cook in the center. So I'm gonna kinda let these, and it's fine to move around your steaks, so you can flip them as needed, or as many times as you want. I'm gonna kinda let these sit on the side for a little bit just cause they're super thick, and I want that fat on the bottom side to actually render out. Um, while that's continuing, what else can I do? I'm kinda done. Oh, what I can do is grind up uh, some pepper. I'm actually completely off of the pepper grinder these days. I, I broke my last one when I moved like a year and a half ago. And uh, I've kind of just been relying on the old trusty mortar and pestle. To get all my fresh, uh, freshly roast or freshly ground peppercorns. 
And you can really control the size as well. All right, stakes have fallen over. But hopefully you can see, started to render out some of that fat in that area. All right, and then the last thing I need for the steak, I'm gonna do a, just a, I'm not really gonna butter base it, but I'm just gonna rub it with some butter at the end. So I'm gonna get that butter out. lost stove cam again, but I will switch them out now. All right, switching fridge cam with stove cam. Got a, got a fully charged stove cam next time. Already big, big mistake. But, the steaks are looking pretty good, so nothing really going on besides the steaks. Going back up here. Hopefully you guys can see stove cam back and restored. I'm gonna start checking the interior here. So, yeah, sitting about at like 100. I'm trying to shoot these for like 130 before I actually go ahead and take them off. This is a good moment. I am gonna add a little bit of butter and turn the heat down. So all I'm waiting for on is the steak. The oven um, is off, but I just have the broccoli just kind of keeping warm in there. But other than that, literally just waiting on steak. 
So I may just cut this section and like give a little, little B-roll um, as, we, as we go and just see what that final time is. Steak number one is done. The other one needs a, maybe another minute or two. So I'm gonna bring that steak over to rest. Give this a little fresh sprinkling. Broccoli. And again, giving this broccoli a sprinkle of black pepper. little spritz of lime just at the end to, like I said, it, it makes these flavors pop a lot more, adding them right at the end like this. Steak number two, done. So I'm gonna stop the timer here. We'll plate everything up, you know, give it a taste test. But we have the broccoli seasoned with salt oil, black pepper, and some lemon. Got the steaks right here. I'm gonna let those rest and then I'll slice into them. And of course, some orzo salad and likely gonna serve this chimichurri at the table. But I don't know exactly where we came up, probably about 35, maybe 40 minutes, I'm not sure. But hopefully you guys did learn a lot in like seeing me actually move around. But let me plate up a couple of these and uh, wrap up this video. And the final payoff we've all been waiting for. To serve, I just sliced a bunch of the steak and then slathered over that chimichurri before plating up with the orzo salad and lemon pepper roasted broccoli. Also, this is Pat and Keith who work for me on the team. And I'd say it was an all around solid meal for just 39 minutes. And hopefully you enjoyed this new look into a video. So let me know down in the comments what you found interesting, what worked, what maybe didn't work. I definitely want to explore more using this format. I can also speed run some recipes so they're not all 40 minutes long. We can do some 10, 15 minute versions, which would be really fun too. But anyway, recipe for this steak dinner will be up on my website if you wanna follow it exactly. But that will wrap it up for me in this one. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace, y'all.